In this video, we're going to go through how to install and set up PoshKit on a Windows machine, and also go through some of the benefits that it gives us when we use PowerShell and Git together. So the best way to go about doing this is probably to see a before and after of the PowerShell Git experience. Do some stuff before we uh, install PoshKit, and then do that same stuff after we install PoshKit and see uh, the difference and just some of the power that uh, PoshKit has. So to do this, uh, I just made a sort of a dummy PoshKit Playground GitHub repository that we can clone to my machine. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's now cloned. Let's go into that directory and just clear out the terminal here. So right off the bat, we just see that it's just a normal PowerShell terminal. Uh, nothing indicating here that we're in a directory that has a Git repository, nothing regarding the branch we're in or what files may or may not have changed. Uh, let's make some changes and see what PowerShell gives us. So I'm just going to open up this directory in Visual Studio Code. And in our example txt, I'm just going to uh, add some text here. And I'll also just add another file, another file.txt, add some garbage in there as well, and see what PowerShell gives us. So enter a new line, and again, no indications of anything going on. If we do a git status, we see that we have in fact modified our example txt and added this file here. So let's um, just do a regular git add to get those ready to be committed. So those are done. If we get status again, we see that these are now ready to be uh, committed locally. So let's go and do that. Just say need some changes locally. I guess we don't need to say that, just made some changes. So those are uh, ready to go. Uh, let's go ahead and mimic maybe another developer on our team, um, maybe adding a file. So let's mimic that just using GitHub. And we'll just say file from server.txt. We'll just say this is from server. And commit that. So that's now there, but we don't have those changes locally yet. So let's do a git fetch to just make a call out to see what's out there. And this is essentially Git's way of telling us uh, that there are some changes that we need to pull down. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've pulled those changes in. If we do a a git log, uh, we see that uh, we now have that file that was uh, made on the server and our changes were applied after that. So now let's go ahead and do a git push to push our changes uh, to the server. So those are now pushed and if we refresh git up here we see our, our other file and our example was changed uh, at the same time. So it's got our changes. But you'll notice that throughout this entire time, all these commands, uh, there was nothing in PowerShell indicating to us sort of explicitly that, you know, one, that we're in a folder that has a Git repository, anything regarding files that have changed, the status of the branch that we're in. Uh, we had to do all that stuff via Git commands to even just get that sort of read-only information. So now let's go ahead and install and set up PoshKit, uh, go through those steps, and then we'll basically do the same thing using PoshKit and see uh, the difference. So I'm going to clear out the console and just go back to our main uh, repos directory. And so the best way to quote unquote install PoshKit is just to grab it and clone its repository from uh, GitHub. So let me just do a search for this. Posh git. 
and they actually have some pretty good um, documentation here regarding installing it and just getting it set up, but we'll just go through the process uh, ourselves. So just like before, I'll snag the URL and clone it to my machine. slow today but it looks like we got it there so now it's on our machine and um, that's it as far as the install really uh, the one thing that we do have to do um, is actually get PowerShell to know about Poshkit and fortunately for us um, they provide an install script for us so let me go into the Poshkit uh, repository that we just cloned and you see that they have a uh, install PowerShell script. That's the one that we're going to run. Uh, what that's essentially going to do is make a PowerShell profile for us. If there's not already, if you don't already have one, if you do have one, it'll just append to it uh, the stuff that's going to call into Poshkit. So all we have to do is do install, enter, and we see that it was now uh, successfully installed and loaded. And to refresh our profile, we'll just run this command here. And this is something that I want you to see intentionally. Uh, this is an error that I get um, when I just grab the, when I just do the initial install of Poshkit and don't do anything else. I had to make one small change to get this to work for me. Uh, I made the change, it didn't affect how Poshkit worked at all, so I think it's a pretty uh, safe change to make. So if we uh, go to where we cloned uh, Poshkit and we open uh, the profile.example uh, script, uh, the issue is with the start SSH uh, agent command. Not exactly sure what it's being used for, but I haven't. By commenting it out, I haven't found it hinder anything for me. So uh, just go ahead and put a uh, pound symbol before that to comment it out, and you should be good. So let me just close that. And I'll run that same command to refresh my profile. And we see that I didn't get the error. So Poshkit is now installed, and it is connected to PowerShell. So let's go back to that. Uh, playground repo that we cloned and see what we see now. So let me get there. And now we're seeing some stuff. So we see right out of the gate that we are in the master branch. Our My simple little repository only has one branch, but if you were in some other branch you would see that indicated there. And then here we, we see this is uh, Git's way of saying basically our um, what we have locally is up to date with what's on the server. We're not needing to uh, pull anything else in. So let's go ahead and just make some of those same changes that we made before we had Poshkit installed and see what we get. So we're going to edit a file, add a file, uh, commit them, make a change in GitHub and fetch it and pull it down and then ultimately push our changes back to the server. So let's just do that real quick. I believe I already have Visual Studio Code open. So um, I'll just add another line to here. I'll uh, add, say, another file to txt. Add stuff in there and save it. Go back to PowerShell and just do a new line. And look at this, we see that we're still up to date with what's on the server, but we've now added a file. This is its way of saying we've added a file with the plus and the number of files that have been added. Um, the sort of tilde here is ones that have been modified, and if we had deleted any files, we would see that indicated here. So let's do what we did before by doing a git add. So that's done. So now it's been staged to be committed locally. And so now it's green, uh, still with one file added and one file modified. Let's commit it locally. And 
so that's done. And now we see uh, that the branch is green. And this, I don't know if you're able to see it on the video, but this is an up arrow, which means that we have stuff uh, committed locally that we have not yet pushed to the server. And so we, that, we see that explicitly, explicitly without having to run any uh, git command to tell us that Poshkit is taking care of that for us and giving a visual indication that we have stuff uh, to push. So now let's go to GitHub and sort of mimic uh, the uh, another developer on our team adding a file. So let's uh, add another file. And let us call it server file2.txt, whatever, and save it, or commit it rather. So we see it there. Clear things out. And if we do a git fetch, we see the same stuff from git as before, but now it's yellow. And the arrow has uh, pointers going both ways. So that means we have stuff that we need to pull from the server uh, to our local machine, but we also have stuff locally that we need to push to the server. Um, another thing that could happen is if maybe we say we didn't make any commits locally and we did a fetch and there were things that we were needing from the server, uh, this branch in the arrow would turn red and the arrow would only be pointing downwards, meaning that uh, we don't have any commits to push, but uh, there are things on the server that we need to pull down. So all that is very explicitly done via the colors, via the arrows, and then file changes are obvious via those um, add, modified, or deleted indications. So let's go ahead and do a git pull to pull down the changes that we made. We have those, so it's again turned green now since we're up to date with the server as far as getting its changes, and the arrow is going up and it's all green. And if we do a git push to push our uh, locally committed changes to the server, That's, <clears throat> that is successful, and it turns the aqua blue color with the sort of three lines indicating that we are fully up to date. Uh, we have nothing to push and nothing to pull down. So we can see that using posh git with PowerShell is uh, very powerful. It gives you a lot of visual indications and clues uh, into just the state of your Git repository, uh, things that need to be push pulled, file changes, what branch you're in, um, if there were any merge conflicts or things like that, it gives you notifications of that as well. So uh, it's super easy to install and set up, and it's a pretty quick win. So hopefully you found this video helpful. I will post the link to the blog with some more information uh, on this YouTube video. And if you have any questions, just post a comment on this video or on my blog. So I hope all of you are well, and talk to you soon. Bye.